Welcome to Cutting It Close, a brand new channel on YouTube where we talk woodworking technology, a little bit of business, and make some cool projects. So today, I wanted to talk to you about the pros and cons of the three different levels slash sizes of CNC's. Let's get into it. So I have the unique experience of owning four CNC's, three different sizes, and actually running a CNC-based business. So I wanna to talk to you today about the pros and cons that I have seen with my CNC's, and I'm also gonna talk about a game changer, which is, to me, the competitive advantage that each CNC has over the other one, and kinda of why I went from a small CNC to an industrial type CNC. So first things first, on these small CNC's, we're gonna go over the pros. And so a small CNC is gonna be great for your hobbyist, if you're a weekend warrior, um, you know, or you have just a small side hustle and it really helps out your side hustle, right? This is not going to be, you're not gonna base a large business off of a small CNC. With that being said, it's gonna be relatively inexpensive. It's probably gonna cost you $2,000 to $6,000, somewhere in there, um, which is relatively inexpensive, right? Um, it's gonna have a smaller footprint, so that's a good pro. It's gonna have a smaller footprint, you can probably put it in your basement, um, if you're really feeling risky, you can put it in an office space in your house, you can put it in your garage. You know, it, it's, it's pretty small, so you can really fit it in a lot of different places. Um, another good thing about it, it's lightweight, so it's gonna be easy to move. So if your wife gets angry at you for having it in your office or in the garage and you need to move it to the basement, you and a couple friends can probably pick it up and move it. Um, with the larger type CNC's, you know, unless you have a forklift in your house, you're probably not going to be able to move it, right? Or if you have really strong friends. Um, another pro about this that it's easy to run and maintain. So, whenever you're running this, you know, it, it's relatively, relatively easy. You're probably going to have the learning curve, like every CNC operator has. But, you know, if you break something, it's a lot less risky of a learning curve. So, if you break something on this, you know, it's only gonna cost you a little bit. It's not gonna cost you an arm and a leg like on the bigger machines. And to me, the biggest pro on this machine is that it can engrave pretty much anything, right? You're not gonna be able to run cutter heads and stuff like that super fast, but a huge pro is you're gonna be able to engrave anything or carve anything, and that's what I think this machine is best for. And that is my game changer for this machine. So if you're just going to, if you're just wanting to carve or um, engrave signs and stuff like that, this CNC is perfect for that. To me, it can compete with any large machine on engraving um, because the feeds and speeds, so it's probably gonna get to run at 60 to 90 inches a minute, which this machine is well capable of. And, and you know, you can really compete with small projects doing small custom engravings with somebody that has a larger type machine because you're getting it done in the same amount of time. So to me, this is the game changer for this machine. Now let's talk about the pros, or let's talk about the cons. Um, this machine has many limitations. For instance, it's table size. Um, it's not a huge table, so you're not gonna be able to cut a sheet of plywood, throw it on here. You're probably gonna work on one to two small projects at a time. Um, you're not going to be able to handle all the bits that are out there for CNC's because this machine is not rigid enough, it's not powerful enough, or anything like that. Um, you know, the max bit you're going to be able to handle properly is probably a 3 16 cutting bit, maybe a quarter inch cutting bit. Um, but, you know, for, for once again, for engravings and sign making, you're fine. Another con of it is you're going to have to change the bit out a lot. So you don't have an automatic tool changer, most likely on these type machines. So if you're doing something that involves three different tools, you have to be there to change them out and reset the height and all that stuff. And that actually can take a lot of time. Trust me, from personal experience, that takes a lot of time. And once again, you're probably gonna have um, a high chance of burning up these bits because this machine is not capable of running at the proper speeds. And so if you are using a quarter inch bit, you're probably not going to be able to run it at the speed you need to run it at. So you're gonna be burning up that bit, which is gonna cost you a little bit more in, um, in bit cost. But with that being said, the takeaways from this is that this is a great machine for engraving and carving and really learning about CNC's, how to get into them 
and this is gonna save you later on if you take out your learning curve on this thing and you break a couple bits and you maybe mess up a part here and there versus when you get to the more expensive machines. Now let's move on to the intermediate. So now we're at my mid-size CNC. I call this an intermediate level CNC. It has a four foot by eight foot bed, three horsepower spindle, uh, some aluminum, some steel, etc. right? And um, this CNC is good for like an extreme weekend warrior or if your side hustle is starting to get a little bit bigger or you, you actually have a small business you're running, this is a great complement to that machine or to that business. Now, one of the biggest pros for this machine is that now you can start doing nested manufacturing on it. So these intermediate level CNCs uh, typically can hold a half sheet, so they're either four by four or four foot by eight foot, so they either hold a half a sheet of plywood or a full sheet of plywood. Now you can start doing multiple projects and multiple parts at the same time and allows you to um, really get more quantity out without having to change small projects on that smaller, or change more projects on that smaller CNC. Um, think of this CNC as like perfect for a sign shop. So it can do all the engravings um, that your smaller CNC can do, but let's say you're, if you're engraving a longer boards or pieces of plywood, now you can engrave multiple of those at the same, same time, which is gonna save you time and actually increase your profitability or increase your output. So that's a huge deal. Most, a lot of sign shops actually have this type of CNC in intermediate level because they can't justify going to the large one because it's intermediate level one satisfy all of those needs. Another pro, this intermediate level one is still probably pretty easy to use. Um, it's probably a pretty similar usability to that smaller type CNC. Um, the computer system's gonna be kind of similar and um, you know it's, it's not gonna be super high maintenance, um, similar to the smaller CNC. And um, you know the, the learning curve is gonna be about the same, right? Parts are getting a little bit more expensive, but the learning curve is still gonna be about the same. And um, you know, so that's a good thing. Um, it's a little bit more rigid, so the vi bits are gonna vibrate a little bit less, and you're gonna have a little bit smoother cuts, um, and all that good stuff. So this machine is a great upgrade from that smaller CNC. And uh, the only, the couple downfalls of this, and now we're getting to the cons, is it, you know, like always, the cost. So you're probably gonna be in the, the $12,000 to $30,000 range for something this size, um, something in the intermediate level, um, which that's a downfall. Your footprint's now gonna be bigger, so you better have a three car garage or a big two car garage or a huge basement to be able to put this machine in it. Um, you know, you may have to go for the 4x4 model instead of the 4x8 model like I have here. So you still have the cutting limitations with this as well. So you're not going to be able to use a half inch bit or anything like that in this machine. You're still going to have some cutting limitations. You're not going to be able to run a maybe, not even be able to run a 3 8 bit, bit to its maximum capacity. You'll be able to run a quarter inch bit and you'll have less limitations than that small bit but you still don't have unlimited access to all the bits in the CNC world and can run really any bit. You're still gonna have some limitations, so that's a pretty big con to this machine. And another one of the cons is that, um, you know, changing out parts is still pretty simple, but, um, you know, if you, if you jump from project to project, you know, the, 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 with the overhead cost associated with everything, it's costing you more for this machine to sit there versus that smaller machine to sit there. And once again, you're gonna have a little bit less fun, maybe, than what that smaller machine's gonna offer because you're, you're probably gonna be worried about price a little bit and cost and, and using this machine. So you're getting a little bit more serious when you get this type of machine. Now, the big and, and most important game changer and why I moved to this machine from my small machine is because I needed to cut out more parts. Um, so I needed to cut out a lot more parts and my small machine just wasn't cutting it, right? So um, I had to start cutting out a lot more parts and so I went to this machine and uh, I can easily justify the cost of this machine because of how many parts I needed to cut out. Um, now during Christmas and my busy seasons and stuff like that, I'll actually use this machine to engrave. Um, it's a very good machine to engrave and like I said, sign shops use this and so I'll actually have both of my small machines engraving along with this uh, CNC right here engraving, which is really, really useful. 
So now let's go on to my larger machine. So now we're to my industrial type CNC, which has a five foot by 10 foot bed, a steel welded frame, and like a 10 horsepower spindle on it that weighs like 80 pounds. Um, now this machine is when you start to run a legit company with quite a few employees and you really start playing with the big boys. Um, and the funny thing was when I was writing out all these pros and cons, the, uh, the cons, there's a lot more cons than I thought there was when I was writing this machine out or when I was uh, actually purchasing this machine. So it's, it's kind of funny to look back at it now and see how many cons there are and uh, see only the, the different pros based off of the upgrade from that medium size CNC to this large size CNC. So with that being said, let's go into the pros. One of the biggest pros on this machine is that it's able to run anything. You have no limitations on what types of bits you can use, how fast you can run it, anything like that. The motors on this are big enough, the, the body is rigid enough to really handle anything you can throw at it, which is a huge pro. It also has an automatic tool changer on it. So now I can change out up to 10 different bits um, in, a single, in a single program. So I can run something and it's gonna run a V bit, then it's gonna run an eighth inch bit, then a quarter inch bit, then a half inch bit, then a certain type of half inch bit. And um, you know, it can do that without me having to stand here and change out the bits, oh, which is a huge pro. Also, it has very high earning potential, as you may guess, right? Because this thing is meant for high output manufacturing. It's meant to put on the same material over and over again and cut out either lots of parts or lots of the type, same type of product using the same bits and really just spit out as much product as possible. So if you can keep this machine busy, it's going to make you a lot of money. And also the nested base manufacturing on this machine is another pro. I have a picture of me right here sitting on this machine um, with a couple hundred parts cut out because the vacuum table is actually strong enough to hold those parts down and the table is big enough to actually nest all of those parts into the machine, which is really cool. Um, it also, you know, it, it, all in all, it, it, it's a beast, right? Um, there's no vibrations, it has really clean cuts, um, and, and, and it's really hard to emphasize that enough, how pretty your cuts are on this machine based off of everything else, because there's no vibration and your, your motors can actually handle everything that this machine wants to do. So it's super cool, really hard to say in a video, but just trust me, it has beautiful cuts. Now there's a lot of cons with this machine. The number one con I would say is the cost. You're probably gonna be looking at on the very, very low end for the lowest end industrial grade CNC, you're probably looking at around $50,000. Um, and the very high end industrial grade type CNC of this kind is about 150,000. Um, there's even higher grade CNCs that are gonna probably be a quarter million dollars, et cetera, but those are gonna start turning into different models where they have three or four heads, they have three or four tables working, they get pretty nuts. Um, so you're looking at a probably 50 to $150,000 for an industrial type CNC like this. You're gonna have a lot of overhead with this CNC because now you have to have a big shop for it. So you have a large footprint, which is another con, and a large overhead, which is another con, right? So the footprint, is gonna be a very big area, and you know you can no longer keep that in your garage or in your basement or anything like that. You better have a 20 car garage in order to keep this bad boy in there, right? And you're gonna to have to start having, you're gonna to have to start having specialized equipment to run this machine, right? I have a, um, a, a devoted air compressor for this machine, an air dryer for this machine, a dust collector that just runs for this machine, et cetera, right? So if this machine is sitting here and you're business savvy, if, you're, if your machine is sitting here not working, it's technically taking up space and losing money because of all the electricity, all the overhead, and all the space is taken up in your shop. So that's a really big con on this machine is if, it, if you don't have enough jobs or anything like that and it sits here for a month, you're, you're, you're really just pouring money down the drain, which is not a good thing. Uh, there's a huge learning curve to this. So, you know, on the other, other machines, the learning, the learning curve is not as risky, not as costly. On this machine, if you break something, you're probably gonna be spending a couple thousand dollars versus on the other machine, if you break something, it may be a couple hundred. Um, and and that's, 
that's not a good thing. And, and you think you know everything on those other machines. Once you get to this big industrial type, the computer interface gets a little bit more complicated. It gets harder to change in and out projects. Um, you know, if you don't check something, you have 10 different bits now, you may have to check to make sure the height is right. You may put in the wrong uh, tool and it may grab the next tool and then it could break something. All that stuff can go wrong. So there's a lot higher risk and a higher risky learning curve with this machine. Um, and, and, and really the, the biggest con I would say with this machine is that you know, the smaller entry level CNC's, you can have a lot of fun with them, right? You can do some carvings and stuff like that. You can do some engravings. You do full fun family projects, etc. The mid-level CNC, you can kind of do the same thing. It gets a little bit more serious, but you're still having fun making cool projects and stuff like that. When you get to this level CNC, it gets a lot more businessy, and all the all the fun stuff you used to love to do on a CNC, like play around with the carvings and stuff like that, it gets either way too complicated with this CNC or it gets too costly because the overhead into this CNC. So getting something like this, don't expect to have as much fun as your smaller CNCs. It's gonna be a lot more serious, but in return, it's probably gonna make you a lot more money. So it's just a, it's just a trade off between happiness and a little bit of money. Granted, I still have a blast on this machine, but I'll tell you when I was starting out on, on that smaller machine and learning, um, that was probably the most fun I've had. And um, yeah, and, and so, all in all, the game changer for me to getting this machine is I needed to cut out parts faster. So that was the biggest game changer. The automatic tool changer and being able to run bigger bits faster actually increased my cutout time from that medium sized CNC to this large CNC by about 50%. So I can actually cut out 50% more parts on this CNC as opposed to my medium sized CNC, which is a pretty big deal if you're a production shop. Now, would I change the way I went about growing my shop, right? So I started with a small entry level CNC, graduated to a mid level CNC, and then ended up with this industrial type CNC. And me at my age, I'm, I just turned 25 a couple days ago. You know, I have a lot of experience with CNCs, a lot of first hand experience with CNCs in business and production type stuff. And I would never trade that for the world. So, you know, I think it is really good to start off smaller and then upgrade and then upgrade again because if you find the right path for your CNC, it's gonna pay for itself like that. Um, and that's kind of what all of my CNCs do. I make sure I'm able to, for them to pay for themselves relatively quickly so I can justify the cost and justify the overhead, et cetera. Now with that being said, I have really big plans for cutting it close in the future. So don't forget to give this video a like, subscribe, leave the comments in the comment sections below, and let me know other types of videos you'd wanna watch because I'm really excited about this channel and really excited to show you all the different types of stuff CNC can make, make some cool projects. I'll go into technology where I'll use a, a rib saw and some nested base manufacturing and uh, lot, lots of really cool stuff in the works. So once again, please subscribe, give this channel a like, and um, yeah, I hope you enjoyed it and thanks for watching.